All right, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thanks for joining us for today's webinar. We're really proud to be joined by Google today to talk about how hotels can maximize their direct booking performance. I'm Ashley Perseviat. I'm a marketing director here at Sojourn and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Um, I think we can all agree that summer 2022 was an absolute bumper season for travel. After two years where people were limited to traveling, maybe just domestically or in a lot of cases, not at all, the world's widely reopened to travelers who are itching to kind of get back at it. Summer 2022 has been called the summer of revenge travel, um, where that pent up demand can finally be acted upon. And we've been speaking to a lot of our hotel clients over the summer and they were seeing full occupancy levels and a summer period that's extended past kind of the traditional summer period, which is fantastic. And I was actually just reading a report this morning that said that global hotel occupancy has exceeded pre-pandemic levels throughout the summer. I think we're up something like 3% compared to 2019. So it's really heartening to see that travel is back and seemingly bigger than ever. Um, but now that a lot of us are starting to move into our shoulder seasons and our off seasons, we thought it would be a really good opportunity uh, to revisit how the last two years have impacted hoteliers and how they can use the tools and resources available to them to capture more direct booking share going forward, which is why it was sort of a no brainer for us to partner with Google on this webinar. Next slide, please. Um, if you're if this is your first time tuning in to one of our webinars and you're new to Sojourn, welcome. We're happy that you can join us. Um, a couple things about Sojourn before we get started is that we're a travel marketing company. We work with travel marketers across hotel types, but also destinations, attractions, and other hotel, uh, other travel verticals to run multi-channel marketing campaigns on their behalf. We have a wealth of travel intent data at our fingertips through the Sojourn Traveler ecosystem. And with our Sojourn Travel Marketing platform, we're able to engage travelers at every stage of their planning and booking journey. Last month um, actually marked our 15 year anniversary. And so to celebrate, we launched with a new website and a, a new look and feel. And you'll see that new branding throughout the presentation today. We are really happy and proud of where we've been and how far we've come. So would encourage you all to check out the new website and let us know what you think. So getting back to the webinar, let's introduce our speakers today. Joining us from Google is Partner Development Manager, Cliff Gallitz. Cliff, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure, uh, thanks Ashley. Uh, my name is Cliff Gallitz. I have been working at Google since 2011. I work on the business development team that supports the travel search products at Google uh, with a particular emphasis on hotel search. Uh, prior to Google, I worked for a flight search software company called ITA Software, and prior to that, I worked in distribution strategy for United Airlines. Great, thanks Cliff and thanks for joining us today. And we are also joined by Sojourn's Chief Solutions Officer, Kurt Weinsheimer. Kurt, can you do the same? Give us a quick intro. Yeah, happy to. Um, thanks a lot for uh, for joining. My name is Kurt Weinsheimer and uh, I've been with Sojourn for nine years. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a fun ride. My background is, is also uh, similar to Cliff in, in the online travel space. Um, starting in the in the early 2000s, bringing hotels uh, online, um, I launched and, and ran the hotel business at at Orbitz uh, in the early 2000s, uh, and that um, which was basically helping people develop that foundation of of driving online bookings, uh, engaging with with customers in the uh, in the online space, and and what's been exciting over the last 20 some odd years since since that is that it just keeps getting more and more dynamic. Um, and so it's always a always a fun talk, topic to be talking uh, travel and travel marketing. So excited to be here. Thanks, Kurt. And so before I hand the reins over to these two, I just wanted to go over the agenda and some housekeeping items. So um, we've got a bit of a Sojourn Google sandwich this morning, uh, this morning, this afternoon. Um, Kurt's going to kick off with uh, speaking to how digital marketing has changed over the past couple of years. And then we'll hand it over to Cliff to speak to some of the tools that Google offers, including hotel search, business profile, free booking links and hotel ads. Um, and then Kurt will come back to summarize how all of this and more can be utilized into um, activating a multi-channel marketing strategy uh, and we'll wrap up with some Q&A and to that end if you do have any questions feel free to drop them into the questions section of your go-to uh, webinar control panel if we don't get to your questions I'll make sure that they're routed to the, the proper people that they can follow up with you directly and so with that um, let's kick things off I'll hand things over to Kurt Kurt over to you great thank you Ashley um, yeah, you know, I think this is a great time for us to be talking um, about what's going on 
in the market because there is so much change that's happened and channels like search and meta search are more important than ever. Um, so this is a really timely topic. And, uh, and I think the big word is change um, because if you think about change, like how many of us changed during the pandemic, right? How many of us changed our habits, our perspectives, our priorities? Um, when we look at the data, most people have changed and technology really influenced a lot of that. Um, consumers came into the pandemic leveraging technology and dabbling in a digital world, but the pandemic threw them into a digital world day in, day out. So if you think about how it impacted work, um, Zoom fatigue, et cetera, uh, if you think about how it impacted shopping, um, you know, we were joking that, that Amazon basically ate our wallet um, uh, during COVID, but what that did was it also changed a lot of habits for good coming out of COVID. So while people are starting to go back to work and things are happening, two things have not changed. Um, one is that desire for travel. That desire for travel has accelerated. So we want to keep jumping into that. Um, but the other thing is what started in COVID and has gone beyond is that digital first mentality. So the challenge today is how do you capture that future demand um, and how do you really attract that digital savvy customer in a genuine way? Um, and that's a really, really important thing to understand. And the biggest piece that's, that, that we need to wrap our, our heads around is that sense of personalization because travel buying has gotten more personal and less formulaic based on online travel shopping being so flexible. And so that creates both the challenge and an opportunity. And that big opportunity is really personalization. This was big before COVID and it's accelerated. In fact, there's a study that McKinsey did that was really interesting. It said that consumers are 76% more likely to buy from brands that create a personal connection and 78% more likely to recommend those brands. And Companies that engage in a personalized way, leveraging first party data, et cetera, grow 40% faster than their competitors. So um, I don't know about you guys, but 40% faster than my competitor sounds like a pretty good, pretty good plan. Um, so what we want to dig in today is how you as travel marketers can leverage search and meta search to better engage with today's plugged in, increasingly privacy conscious consumers. And search and meta search are perfect for this because it gives you that chance to engage one on one with consumers you know that are interested in your hotel or your destination. So um, it should be should be a, a a great discussion because of that. And so let's jump to the next slide. Great. The other piece of this is direct bookings. We saw that direct bookings were increasing during COVID because people wanted more detail, more information. And the opportunity for hotels is to continue that momentum and manage that. The way I think about it is I think about uh, distribution channels as a portfolio and you want a balanced portfolio. You want to leverage the OTAs for what they do, which is driving a lot of new customers, new markets, um, but you also want to make sure that you're driving that direct demand to build better experience, develop loyalty, um, and really own that customer from a long time uh, standpoint. So it's important for us to focus on how we drive direct and drive it in a meaningful way. And personalization and multi-channel management is an important part of that. So let's jump to the next slide. So when you think about that from an impact standpoint, this is just kind of a good example um, that one of our one of our clients saw that they used to have that huge demand on OTAs and were able to flip that by really focusing on driving real engagement, driving loyalty and driving a multi-channel strategy. So the idea is that you never want one way to drive everything. You're going to have a portfolio to maximize opportunities but you wanna be strategic about it and you wanna be the one deciding how that's gonna work and how that's gonna go. So if we think about what that strategy looks like, if you jump to the next slide, it's really taking a multi-pronged approach. 
So what you want to think about is driving personalization with opt-in audiences. So making sure that you're, you're gathering that information from clients and asking for permission to market to them using hash email, online and offline data, and then leveraging that um, with the data-driven strategy. The second thing is you want durable channels. What we mean by this is things like search and meta search, whether you've cookies or don't have cookies, no matter how technology shifts and goes, these channels are key because it's first party activity. It's a one to one relationship and you know that customer is interested in your destination, your hotel. So you want to be really digging deep into this and then moving forward. What we also think about from a multi channel standpoint is durable tactics. Uh, as technology changes and data capabilities change, you'll look at things like contextual targeting and a lot of other kind of future opportunities. But today we really want to hit on the power of durable channels like search and meta search to drive that, um, that personalization with permission, making sure that we're engaging in a meaningful way. If you go to the next slide. So, so the opportunity here is for us to dig deeper into these channels and then drive to the relevancy uh, for them. So Cliff, take it away. All right, Kurt, thank you very much. Um, uh, and thank you, Kurt, and thank you, Ashley, and the entire Sojourn team for having Google participate today. Um, I think Ashley might have alluded to it. I did a webinar with Sojourn in early 2021, which was obviously a very different time. Um, I will have some repeated content today, but some very important updates as well uh, with some products that uh, weren't quite there uh, earlier in the pandemic. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, we'll start first with the good news, which is that we are definitely observing travel query levels well above uh, 2019 levels, that, uh, which was before the pandemic. Uh, certainly, uh, I believe Ashley did allude to this for sure. Uh, there was some pent up demand for travel. And we are certainly seeing consumers uh, take advantage of that today. Uh, but with that said, uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty. Um, some regions have not fully relaxed uh, COVID restrictions. Of course, we have a conflict in Ukraine, uh, high gas prices and inflation that are impacting consumers' wallets. And so we don't yet know exactly how uh, this rebound and recovery will look, and we don't know what other factors uh, might be coming along our way to uh, further shape future travel demand and, and travel booking patterns. Um, but I'm here today to uh, give you uh, some tips about some features at Google that can uh, help you with your uh, booking strategies. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, all that said, I'm going to do just about 15 minutes with uh, a few key areas to help you understand uh, Google features that can help you uh, with your future direct booking strategies. Um, first, we'll talk about hotel search and help you understand how hotel search works on Google. Number two, talk a bit about our business profile uh, product and how you can use that to your advantage. Lastly, perhaps most importantly, activating free booking links. And then I will touch briefly on hotel ads and uh, some of the advantages that, that you might find there uh, with hotel ad campaigns. Uh, let's go to the next slide, which will be uh, just briefly, the first thing we'll talk about is hotel search. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. So when I refer to hotel search, what I'm really speaking about is the specific detailed hotel results that appear on searches from Google Maps, as well as the uh, primary Google search page. Um, these search results include not only information about the property, but also prices and availability for the property and booking links to various booking channels. Um, and I'll go into this in much more detail. So let's go to the next slide, please. Um, how does search work for Google, uh, for hotel search, pardon me? There's really three primary ways that uh, Google users are discovering properties uh, on Google. First is they might do a search directly for your property. Uh, so as an example, search for Chicago, Weston, River North. Um, and then with that, they will get pretty much standard search results page that you're expecting, along with a property detail card on the right-hand side. Second primary way people find properties on Google is to do a market search. So they might simply search for hotels in Chicago, as an example. With that, they'll get a list of properties 
They'll have various uh, options to sort and filter those properties for what's of interest to them. And then again, they'll be able to peruse you know, various property detail cards, uh, which I'll describe in a little bit, uh, to help them compare and understand what each property offers. And then a, a third primary way that folks discover hotels is through Google Maps products. And again, similar to the other search path, uh, they might search directly for your hotel on Maps, but more commonly, they might be looking at a particular point of interest, perhaps someplace they're visiting, and looking for hotels near that destination on Maps. And with that, they can narrow down their options and again, review details about each of those properties. Um, so if you go to the next slide, please. Regardless of the search path, users will end up with some flavor of this detail card about the property that you see here. Um, this is a detailed property card that's curated by Google. And I'll go through just a few of the high points of areas that you might wanna pay attention to here. Um, the first is uh, the content that we curate about the property. So as an example, uh, we have images that come not only directly from the property, typically through the Google business profile, which I'll discuss in a little bit, but also through third-party sources around the web. Second, there will be a review detail card that has review, review information from first-party Google users, as well as, again, trusted third-party sources. And then there's also an extensive list of amenity information about the property. So think of this as your on-site features, uh, you know, any restaurants, pools, spa, et cetera, as well as an editorial description, location description about your property. Um, so this just helps users understand basically what they're going to encounter on site. Second, which is shown here on the right hand side, is there's going to be prices available from various channel partners. Uh, there's both paid hotel ads, which are shown here, as well as free booking links, which appear below those. And I'll go into each of those in more detail later. Uh, the third area on the card that I'd really like to highlight are some of the links for users to contact your hotel directly. Uh, there's a website direct button. There's also a phone number and typically a maps direction button to help users find your property. And these are important unpaid sources of traffic to your website and phone number, et cetera, that you might not even be aware of that you should, you know, as I get into Google business profile a little bit, and take advantage of some of the reporting there to understand those sources of inbound traffic. Uh, so with the next slide, it's going to be a segue to our next topic, which is we will talk a little bit about Google Business Profile. You might have heard of it in the past as Google My Business. Uh, next slide, please. But the Google Business Profile is really going to be the key element that you can manage to help you uh, manage your presence on Google and Google Maps. Um, next slide, please. There's gonna be three key steps to take advantage uh, of your Google business profile to the max. Uh, I'm assuming that most of the hotels joining this call today already have a Google business listing. They've already claimed that listing and maybe actively managing it. But if you're not, the first thing you need to do is really sign up and claim your Google business profile. Uh, you'll see this URL here, google.com slash business. That would be where you can learn much more information about how to do that. Uh, the second thing you'll want to do is manage the details about your property. So as I mentioned on that prior slide where it showed the property detail cards, uh, you know, you can manage your amenities, uh, manage your photos, and I'll talk about each of those in a little bit more detail. Uh, but this is where you can control the information that's being displayed on Google. And then third, we offer a couple different tools that will help you engage with your customers. Uh, that could include review responses as well as posts about your property, which I'll discuss in a little bit. Um, so I think, uh, next slide, please. The first thing you're gonna wanna do with your Google business profile is make sure that your business attributes are current and up to date. Uh, we get these information about your property directly from you when you offer, and if not, we'll try to fill in what we don't know from other third parties. Uh, the important thing to note here is that Google does change the attributes and elements that are available for you to edit from time to time. As an example, uh, during the pandemic, uh, we did offer a number of health and safety related attributes. Um, and so this information is displayed to users directly, but also importantly note that if a user comes to Google with a question such as hotels with a pool, as opposed to just hotels, we'll use this information there to help inform those search results. So it's really to your advantage to keep those up to date. And then also with the stat shown here, we do find that users that view the listing to be more complete 
and relevant will tend to engage more with that listing, which again could help attract more users to your hotel. Um, next slide, please. The other thing I would note is really try to keep the photos about your property up to date on uh, Google Business Profile. Uh, we have online documentation that shows uh, which hotel or which uh, property type photos we recommend. But generally speaking, it's going to be you know photos of each room type available at your property, um, photos of the common areas, the lobby, uh, any unique areas such as the gym, the spa, that sort of thing. Really just help users make sure that they're seeing the latest and greatest uh, view of your property um, and all of those different elements that make your property unique and interesting for those users. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we do change the attributes about your property that are available for you to edit. Uh, another key update here is we recently offered uh, sustainability attributes for you to edit. Um, this allows you to highlight any sustainable uh, certifications that your property might have, uh, both about your built space or your operating practices. Uh, this helps users that are interested in the environment to understand uh, what are your energy saving practices, what are your water reduction practices, that sort of thing. Um, the other thing that's important to note is there is the feature on Google Business Profile to, to note seasonal, seasonal closures, pardon me. Uh, so you don't have to toggle your, your property on or off. You can make users understand that, you know, as, as it gets to be fall here in the Midwest, uh, you might be closing down for the winter uh, or the summer, depending on where you are in the world. And just help those users understand that, you know, your property is not closed. It's temporarily closed. Perhaps they should adjust their travel plans if they're really interested in visiting. And perhaps that's also why they're not seeing prices for your property uh, for the particular dates that they're looking at. Um, next slide, please. I'd also like to note a new feature, which is called posts. You might have heard of it referred to as local posts in the past. Um, this is a product feature that's available in Google Business Listings, and it's been around for a while, but was recently expanded to the hospitality space. So as a hotelier, it might be new to you. And this really allows you to create a rich post with a photo and some marketing information about your property. It might be uh, a new renovation, a new feature that you have at your property, uh, maybe a Peloton bike that wasn't there before, uh, depending on your brand. Um, and this just really helps you communicate to, to users and your prospective guests a little bit more about your brand and what you offer, um, specials that are occurring. Uh, so definitely take a look at that feature and see if that might be something you want to take advantage of. Um, next slide, please. I also want to note that with your Google Business Profile, you also get a number of different insights. So there's a reporting tab that's there for you that's going to show you uh, where are guests in the world uh, looking for your property? How are they then translating that, that search result into traffic to your property? Are they clicking the website button? Are they calling your property? Really just to help you understand um, how these users are finding your property in Google and how that's translating into uh, real booking potential for your hotel. Uh, and so with that, the next slide, please. Uh, maybe the the meat of the presentation i'd like to talk to you about free booking links uh, this is a feature that was launched in uh probably first quarter of 2021 uh shortly after i last spoke to the sojourn audience so free booking links allows any hotel to show their rates and availability on google uh, with direct links to the hotel property website so there's also online travel agents that can take advantage of free booking links but with the Hotel Direct website link, there will normally be an official site badge. Uh, and important to note, there is no ad purchase required to take advantage of free booking links. Uh, next slide, please. Question you might have, why do I want to appear in free booking links? Why should I care? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these links will appear across Google Search and Google Maps. They'll show real-time availability for the billions of users of search and maps. There's literally you know, millions of users searching for hotels every day on Google. Help them understand what your prices are and help them take advantage of your direct booking links. Um, and with those direct bookings, uh, you know, you'll see the increased value uh, of knowing more about that customer, uh, knowing their email address and website if you're collecting that information with the booking, and then being able to communicate with that guest both before and after the stay to really get the most out of uh, that booking that they've done with you.
Uh, next slide, please. How can you know if you are already taking advantage of free booking links? Um, a few different ways, but probably the easiest way to go would be go to google.com slash travel. You'll get this page and then you can just type in your hotel property name right there in the search box. And next slide, please. Uh, once you find the property details card about your hotel, you're going to want to navigate to the prices tab. And there you'll see the hotel ads at the top. Below that, the free booking links. Look for the official site badge and uh, make sure that that price is matching what you would expect for that itinerary date. And then go ahead and uh, click that and make sure that it's actually going to uh, your direct booking engine uh, site. Okay, uh, next slide. What would happen if you were not appearing in free booking links? Uh, so my recommendation here would be, you're gonna wanna talk to your technology partners that are helping you with your web booking. Uh, more than likely your booking engine, possibly computer reservation system, property management system, uh, or maybe a channel manager, and contact them, ask them if they're providing rights to Google, and if not, could they? And if they're not providing your rights to Google, ask them what you would need to do to opt into that program and uh, get your direct rates, direct booking links appearing on Google. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, you can go to, uh, I wanna get this URL correct, it's gonna be travel.google slash partners, uh, and you can search for various travel partners that, that we know are already providing rates to Google. Um, but if not, I would recommend, again, just you know who your vendors are, discuss it with them directly. Uh, another quick point I wanna make here is, uh, back on your Google business listing that we discussed, uh, we do offer the opportunity for some hotels with basic rate uh, structures to enter their rates directly uh, into that Google business profile. Works very well for folks that have, you know, pretty basic rate structures, you know, maybe Monday through Thursday is this rate, weekends might be a touch higher. Um, doesn't work so well today for folks with, uh, you know, minimum stay restrictions, some advanced purchase restrictions, et cetera. Uh, so if you are interested in that, kind of continue to watch that space and maybe express some interest. And ultimately, we hope that there will be an option for you to enter rates directly as well, uh, if you can't do that through one of your technology partners. Uh, next slide, please. Talk quickly about uh, best practices for free booking links. Uh, first and foremost, you're gonna wanna maximize your visibility through providing as many rates as possible. Make sure that you're providing rates through your partners for a full year of rates, for stays up to 14 days, and make sure that you're not gonna miss out on any uh, no rate available type links that would come to you. Second thing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're really providing accurate prices. We wanna make sure that users uh, see rates on Google that they're gonna actually be able to book when they get to your website. So be mindful of those uh, resort fees uh, that are not optional and make sure that that's all being reflected correctly. Uh, if not, you may ultimately have your free booking links uh, suspended or your hotel ads demoted. And lastly, uh, make sure that you're providing a user-friendly landing page. Uh, keep in mind that users have already looked through various properties when they're on Google. They've already seen uh, the rates that you're offering for particular dates, and they're more than likely ready to book. So make sure that that landing page experience is, is gonna help them convert quickly if that's really what they want to do. Uh, and the next slide, please. Uh, I will talk really quickly about hotel ads. This is not meant to be a bait and switch. I talked a lot about some of the free features that we offer. Uh, but we do also offer hotel ads. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there's a couple different reasons why you, you might really want to consider hotel ads in addition to free booking links. Uh, the first is it, it does provide some increased prominence. As I showed earlier, uh, hotel ads do appear above the free booking links. That may lead you to some you know, additional traffic. Second is it's going to offer you some additional ways that you can target specific users that are of interest to you, prospective guests. So as an example, you know, maybe you're trying to attract inbound uh, foreign travelers. Maybe you're really interested in attracting last minute guests that are on their website near your hotel and looking for a place to stay that evening. Um, hotel Eyes is gonna be a tool for you to attract those guests. It's also gonna be an opportunity for you to take advantage of property promotion ads that might help you get some increased prominence for your property as users are searching for your hotels on Google. And lastly, with hotel ads, you're gonna get some increased reporting that's gonna, again, further help you understand uh, how users are uh, viewing your site, coming to your site, and some tools about price competitiveness and, and how your direct booking rates are stacking up compared to online travel agents in the market. So again, hopefully you understand a bit more about some of the free products that we offer, 
uh, but also be aware that we do offer some paid products that, that can help you with your direct bookings as well. Uh, with that, I believe I'll throw it back to Kurt for some additional thoughts. Great. Thanks, Cliff. Um, yeah, I, li I like how you say that that uh, hotel ads is, is optional. Um, it is from, I think, from Google's perspective, but fr from our perspective as a, as a marketing partner, uh, we, we don't see a, a meta search as optional anymore. So um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. What I want to do is give a little bit more perspective around how the channels that, that Cliff was talking about play into kind of this multi-channel strategy um, and then dig a little bit deeper on some of the perspective that we have um, tied to, to search and meta search in, in particular. So one thing that's really important to note is that as we talked about uh, customers travel buying behaviors and search behaviors have changed dramatically. We're seeing that a customer for certain trips will, will literally make up to 400 searches for a single trip. So they're doing discovery, they're doing planning, they're finally doing booking, but they kind of bounce up and down. So it's not a simple funnel anymore because of the dynamic nature of online tools that the customers can can leverage. And so that's why we find that you need to be on channels like search and meta search throughout that buying cycle because they have different value at different times. So at the discovery stage, a vast majority of, of consumers actually start their, their, their journey using search. Um, and they'll also then quite often, um, then once they drive deeper, they're doing that at the discovery level at first. So as Cliff was saying, they may say, hotels in Chicago before they have that sense. So you wanna be there, you wanna be in the, in the consideration set, at the very top of, of the funnel. And that's where you're matching a, a combination of branded and non-branded keywords. Because then when you get into that planning stage, that's really where search both from a non-branded keyword, so hotels in Chicago, to getting into branded keywords, if they actually have seen your hotel and are excited about it, you can be leveraging both of those capabilities effectively. And when they want to go to price compare and or they're looking in in, uh, in the results and they're seeing maps, et cetera, where the Google hotel ads uh, are, are there, you need to be in that meta search um, uh, uh, game um, because that is a critical place to be. As we talked about before, um, other players will be there. You need to be there. And then finally, at that point of booking, um, you definitely need to be uh, front and center. If somebody is literally saying, um, punching in, I want to stay at Cliff's Hotel Palace, um, you need to be there. Um, because otherwise, an OTA is going to be there, another channel, a wholesaler will be there, another channel will be there to capture that booking. That really should be you. They want to stay at your hotel, take advantage of that opportunity. So when you think about it, up and down that funnel, no matter where, what stage they're, they're in, search and meta search play a really important role. Um, and so as you, if we jump to the next slide, um, if you think about it, it's also about that engagement, different engagement in different ways. And so when Cliff was talking about the importance of the content that you're putting up there, this is critically important. You want to make sure that, first of all, that content is consistent across channels that you're leveraging. You want to make sure that your pricing is consistent across channels that you're leveraging. So the customers are getting the best view of you throughout the process. So just trying to emphasize the importance of having up-to-date content, the best photos possible, and accurate pricing. Because in the end, pricing matters. They want the value, but once they see your hotel, if they can get your hotel for $200 on your site, but $195 on another site, they're gonna go to the $195. So you need to make sure that you're price competitive and managing that effectively. I then wanna dig a little bit deeper um, into this. So multi-channel is critically important because people are leveraging different capabilities for different reasons. But then if you drive, if we go to the next slide, we dig a little bit deeper on the search piece of this. I think it's really important that you understand when those search results are, are out there, other players are going to be bidding on your search terms. 
they're either going to be bidding on your terms or they're bidding on destination terms. So the critical piece is for you to get your ad and your placement in that game. And so this is really important, not just people talk about, well, I want to be there when it's hotels in Chicago. That's important. But what's critical is that you've got a strong brand strategy on search. So if somebody has literally gone and looking for the Lafayette Hotel in San Diego, you need to be front and center there. That is of critical importance. And so we talk about that as brand, pro brand pro protection being a critical part of search. Um, and while SEO can be an effective tool, paid search tends to be critical. So you need to be balancing both paid search and, and, um, and SEO in order to optimize your placement online and capture that known demand um, that you have from a customer. It also allows you to create potentially a better experience for that user, a more personalized experience, because if they click through that ad, they come directly to your website. You can then engage with them, capture their, their email that you can then use for marketing moving forward. You can understand what they're searching for, when they're searching, and you can leverage that data in remarketing. You can leverage that data for more intelligent search um, uh, meta search. So it's really important to be driving and leveraging that direct demand um, aspect. So critically important to be doing that. And so if you just click through, when you're thinking about that importance, it's there's also, um, it's helpful if you are the direct website because you get that official website um, uh, naming um, on the ad. Uh, which is also influential for customers and, and cliff probably has data on that but that is an important thing if people want to know it's the official site so that can be also impactful you get the ad in the right place with that powerful direct message that can be the the ticket to success and then the last thing that i want to jump into if you jump to the next slide is on um meta search so this is really important um, on a couple levels one I agree with Cliff, you've got to be in the free in the free listings. That's a no brainer. Um, and when you combine paid search and paid meta search and free listings, that's where you're going to optimize your potential to capture as much demand as you possibly can. And so it's really important that um, you're able to do this. And it's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world. As Cliff said, you've got to get access to your rates and availability. Um, Etc. And so that's something that partners like Sojourn can help you do. We can work with you, um, uh, provide that information, get you on, and not only provide the paid paid meta search uh, capabilities, but also make sure you're in those free links automatically. That's a really important thing. And one other thing to to th to to note is that if you are working with a partner. Uh, on your meta search program and they're offering uh, to support you with both free links and and the the um, paid meta search uh, make sure that you're not getting charged for your free links um, as cliff said they're free links and so they should be free to you uh, and they can actually create we've seen 10 percent increase in your meta search capture um, when you're using both gha from a paid standpoint and free listing so that's a pretty powerful thing and it actually makes your effective cost to capture lower um, and so that's an important thing for for you to think about and so if you jump to the to the uh the last slide from a multi-channel standpoint this is just critical so what we've seen is um, growth and performance when customers are using multiple channels to drive that activity. And that's why at Surgeon, when we talk about one channel is, is not optional, um, we really don't think they are. You need to be everywhere that the customer is because OTAs are everywhere that the customer is. And so the opportunity is for you to be doing the same. Taking a multi-channel strategy, tracking that activity, and then driving that demand and performance. And when you do multi-channel effectively, you actually can be more efficient. 
So for example, when we're working with our clients, if we're running display, uh, social, search, meta search, we'll be running across all channels for them. If that user then gets hit with the display ad and a search ad, and then finally closes, let's say, clicking through meta search to come to your site, you're only paying once for that conversion when you're working with um, someone like Sojourn. So it's important to think about having a multi-channel strategy, but also making sure that you're doing that in the most cost-effective way and efficient way that you possibly can. So uh, to kind of wrap things up and then we can get into, into Q&A, from a, from a takeaway standpoint, there are kind of four things that, that we want you to remember. One is things are changing and, and the digital savvy customer is here and they're here to stay and you need to get in front of them. Um, leveraging direct bookings is a critical part of your portfolio. It drives personalization, it drives better experience and it can drive loyalty. Also, people are searching in many different ways. And so they're finding you through different channels at different times. It may be search, it may be maps, it may be Google hotel ads. So being in every place along the way um, is critically important to both get engagement upfront, engagement as they're deep in the search, and then doing things like retargeting, remarketing through search, display, et cetera, to make sure that they come and not just look, but book on your, on your site. So that's really why we talk about um, a multi-channel approach to driving driving success. So thanks a lot and let's jump into the questions. Thanks Cliff, thanks Kurt, that was really informative. Uh, just listening, I know that it's such a minefield of uh, ways and, and reasons that people are looking and booking all the time. I think it can be quite overwhelming to hoteliers, but it's really good that there's so many, you know, Google and the likes of, the likes of Google and Sojourner here to help and there's there's tools and, and ways that we can uh, maximize that direct booking opportunity. So fantastic. Um, like I said, drop your questions in the question box. Um, a few have come through so we can get started on those. I think the first question is best for Cliff. Um, what is best practice for hotels when it comes to improving their presence on Google? Uh, so with regard to improving presence on Google, uh, first I would say, you know, there's really no direct way to influence the ranking of like the organic hotel list. Uh, so, so try not to worry too much about that, but rather, uh, you know, do the things that I mentioned in the presentation, making sure that your Google business profile information is up to date, uh, engage with customers through replying to reviews. And then importantly, make sure that your rates are available on Google, your direct booking rates. Um, you know, if you're relying only on OTAs and perhaps they're not providing rates for your property, then you know, user might see no rates and just assume, you know, sold out or not open, et cetera. So, you know, just making sure you have a comprehensive listing uh, with rates that are, you know, comprehensive as well. Uh, and, and you should do pretty well uh, through Google. Great, thanks. The next question um, is for Kurt, um, I'm always, the, sorry, the question is, I'm already running on the biggest meta search engine. Why would I want to spend the time and effort to be on other smaller ones? Yeah, I th that's a, a good question. And, and I think it's, um, I think it's simple. Uh, do you want to be where some of the travelers are searching or do you want to be where all of the travelers are searching? Um, and it's just a question of, of, of how wide do you want that funnel to be? Um, and if you know that your hotel is going to be able to be bought on pretty much any meta search site that, that, that is out there because the OTAs are there, then you want to be there also. But I think you want to, from a primary standpoint, you do want to make sure that you're on, you know, the, the biggest and the strongest things like Google hotel ads, but then also understanding from a regional standpoint, the impact of different, different channels on, uh, in different markets. But the key is, like any multi-channel strategy, you want to be where the consumers are. Yeah, and I do think, like, why would you not want to cast as wide a net as possible, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, why did Google launch free booking links? For Cliff, obviously. That's for me. Uh, why did Google launch free booking links? Uh, it really has to do with user preference. 
Uh, we know that uh, users really prefer to see the direct rate from the hotel. Um, even if they end up booking with an OTA, they, they like to see you know, what the hotel is offering to know that the, the rates can be trusted and they're comprehensive. But a lot of users really prefer to book directly with the hotel. And so we made a concerted effort to make sure that a hotel ads expertise was not a prerequisite for either the hotel or their technology partners to, to get those direct rates onto Google. Uh, and so we made a couple changes to our product. You know, the first being um, we uh, simplified the integration approach using uh, ARI that's more closer to industry standard and then dramatically increased the partner set that, that we were engaging with to provide those hotel direct booking rates, um, really just in an effort to, to please users uh, with those hotel rates. And we sort of have a follow-up question on the free booking length. How can a hotel measure their free booking length performance? Uh, so the, probably a couple different ways to answer this question. The first would be if they're already working with a partner, you know, either a, a sojourn or agency type or just their rates technology partner, and they're using ads, there are some ways to measure the unpaid traffic along with the ads traffic uh, through the way that you kind of structure your direct booking URL. So that would be the first path you could consider. Also, you're going to want to check out that reporting that I mentioned in the free booking, or not free booking links, pardon me, uh, hotel business profile listings. Uh, there is now uh, a feature that shows you how many links were clicked from the free booking links. Sorry, a lot, a lot of buzzwords and jargon there. Apologies. <laughs> Um, Kurt, you mentioned first party data in sort of the first half of the presentation. Can you remind us what that is again and why it's important? Yeah, so so first part first party data talk about jargon. We tend to kind of jump into all, all these things. Um, but first party data, the 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 simple thing is um first party means a direct relationship that you have with the client. So um first party data is is probably the most important data that a hotelier has. And other other players like retail have been leveraging um, first party data for over a decade to drive better engagement. So examples of first party data would include um, site visitors and what they were interested in, um, purchasing uh, across channels. So it'll be email, it'll be a uh, phone number, it'll be loyalty membership. Um, it may be demographics or preferences that customers have provided. So. This is that direct data that you're getting from consumers. And the reason that it matters is that um, you, want, you want permission, uh, you want customers to opt into that first party data. So when you're on the site and you say, hey, get a 10% discount if you provide my email, um, partners are like, we'll capture that data and then can actually leverage that to support retargeting, remarketing, and better engagement with the customers. The key is having it opted in. So you've got that permission, because once a customer gives you permission, um, they have higher expectations for personalization. And so they've, they've given you a first party uh, relationship. You need to take advantage of that in a positive way that drives value for the customer. Um, because as we said, you know, 68, 78% of customers really want that personalized relationship, but only about 30% of customers feel comfortable with how their data is being used. Um, so you've got to balance that, get opt-in, and then really demonstrate the value of that, um, of that relationship. And first-party data is, is critical. In fact, for our hotel customers, we, um, we will capture hashed email for every single booking that they're bringing in, in which they've got permission, and we we build that um, that treasure chest of data to then build better experiences and promotions for those consumers in the future when they want to book again uh, with that hotel in that destination. Great, thank you. And I think we've got time for one more question, and this one, uh, another one for you, Kurt. If I run multiple channels like like you recommend, how do I know I'm not paying multiple times for one booking? Yeah, th this is this is a really important um, thing to do, and I think it it has to do with uh, with reporting and 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 your partners. So I think, as Cliff said, 
no matter what you're running, you want to be looking at different reports and understanding what's going on. Um, at Sojourn, what we do is we provide that reporting on a channel by channel basis. So if a hotel is working with us, we'll actually provide what, what drove the final, if you will, that last click, last view channel that drove the conversion. Other other channels may have influenced that, but with us, you don't you don't pay for that uh, for that conversion. So it's really important as you're thinking about multi-channel to make sure that you um, have visibility into um, what's happening on different channels um, and not duplicating that effort. So it's all about tracking and reporting, leveraging things like um, GA4, uh, leveraging um, partners such as ourselves to make sure that that that, that is happening. So the, the first place to start is is uh, if you're working with it with an agency partner, ask. Um, if you're not, uh, it can be pretty challenging, but you're going to want to look at 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 your reporting. Um, so that's that's what I would recommend. Great, thanks, Kurt. So I think that's that's pretty much all the time we've got for today. Thank you guys for taking those questions. Um, a huge thanks to Cliff and Kurt for taking the time to be with us, um, and thanks to everyone who tuned in today. We'll be sending out the recording in case you, anyone wants to go back and review anything that you just heard. Um, and we're always keen to hear how we're doing, or perhaps suggest topics that would be useful for future webinars. So um, be sure to reach out to us on our social channels, get in touch, let us know how we can help. Um, thanks again, Cliff and Kurt, once again, uh, and have a great rest of the day, everyone. Great. Thank you. Thank thanks. you. Thanks. Bye-bye.